Yes, for you fellas, Matt, a.k.a. the doc in the arena, the guy that will give you the medical take on sporting topics. Now, we've got a great one today. Article coming out of The Guardian. Shout out to Tune in the Discord for letting me know. Listen to this. The Sports Council Equality Group has said, For many sports, the inclusion of transgender people, fairness and safety cannot coexist in a single competitive model. Those are the results from a new report from the UK Sports Councils looking into transgender inclusion in non-elite sport in the UK. So pretty emphatic and a change of tact from what we've been hearing regarding transgender inclusion in sport up until this date. So I'm going to dive into this article. But before I do, I want to say firstly, please, please, please do not be offended by this video. It's just reporting what the news has said. Equally, do not use this as a chance to spread hate in the comments the comments will be deleted and you'll be blocked i am for a healthy discourse by the way so please let me know just general thoughts general opinions in the comments and we can dive right in other than that the usual if you like the video actually hit like because it helps me a lot and other than that let's keep it moving so let me tell you about this report first because by all accounts this is the most comprehensive report ever on this topic which of course is extremely hotly disputed He was released by the UK Sports Council, so that includes England, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. And it involved, let me read it so I don't make a mistake. It involved an 18-month review that involved speaking to more than 300 people and 175 organisations, including current and former athletes, transgender people and LGBT plus and women's groups. It also examined the latest scientific research, making it the most comprehensive report into this hotly disputed area with all that having been said what did they find obviously it's a long report three takeaways for you okay number one suppressing testosterone for 12 months cannot guarantee fairness if you guys remember from my previous video the current rules stipulate that transgender female athletes have to suppress their testosterone levels to below 10 for up to 12 months to be able to compete in female categories this has now been said to not be enough It goes on to say that there appears to be a retention of physical capacity in transgender people who suppress testosterone from male levels. It states, such physical differences will also impact on safety parameters in sport, which are combat, collision or contact to nature. That all makes sense. But it's interesting that it's taken such a right turn from the current IOC guidance, which to be fair, the IOC has admitted themselves is currently not fit for purpose. This fits nicely into the second the second takeaway for you guys, which is this. Inclusivity, fairness, and safety cannot coexist. Again, massive, massive, massive statement. Listen to this. In reviewing the latest science, the guidelines say adult male athletes have on average a 10 to 12% performance advantage over female competitors in swimming and running events, and that, and that increases to a 20% advantage in jumping events and a 35% performance in strength-based sports, such as weightlifting for similar-sized athletes. As a result of what the review found, the guidance concludes that the inclusion of transgender people in female sport cannot be balanced regarding transgender inclusion, fairness, and safety in gender-affected sport where there is meaningful competition. Well... So there we are. That's 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 clear in this particular report. And they've they've stuck their neck out there in saying all that stuff. They really, really have. So it's, it's interesting UK sport has gone that far. With all that having been said, what's the solution? That's the third takeaway. They have said there is no single solution. Listen to this. No one was able to offer a single solution which would resolve all identified issues or that would satisfy all stakeholders. That That proves how difficult this situation is. I want to bring it to you guys, to be honest. I want, to, I want to hear in the comments what type of solutions you might have to offer because they've done an 18-month review. They've, looked at, they've talked to everyone. They've looked at all the evidence and they can't quite figure out what the solution is. I get it. I, I always thought there's not one single solution and it might be a case-by-case basis thing. They suggested other things, but mo- most importantly, they've actually devolved the responsibility to the governing bodies of the individual sports. And I suppose it then gives those sports more leeway 
to consider the demands of their individual sports and how they can be more inclusive. I want to hear what you guys think. What what would be the best way to be more inclusive? Like, don't be a problem person. Be a solution person. Yeah, that, that's the best type of person. Here, here are some things that were suggested or have come to my mind, right? So biobanding is something actually they do in, in certain sports, particularly in academy, like in academy football. They actually group people, not just by age, but by weight, by height, by physical capabilities and, and make them compete. And they do that for obviously various reasons. But I wonder if that could be brought into the sporting realm, the, the sort of more elite sporting realm or when it comes to mixing the genders in sport. That's that's an idea. Just just flat out unsegregating sports that don't need to be segregated. So I think in this article and in the report, they've they've used terms like universal competition groups or open competition groups where, you know, it can be male, female, any any height, any weight whatever whatever and sort of introducing making that more of the norm and i think probably in certain sports in certain competitions that could be the case where they, where there's no significant advantage and just take away that that issue of categorizing by gender or sex and thirdly yeah this was in the article as well contact versus non-contact versions of the sport so contact versions may be separated by gender sex whereas non-contact can be more of an open inclusive sport really really want to know your thoughts i like having conversations like this open conversations not negative conversations thinking solutions not thinking problems so if you've got solution if you've got ideas anything interesting anything innovative put them in the comments drop them in the discord you can have a chat about them and will be enjoyable Uh, as i said i hope no one found that offensive it's just an interesting article i will leave the link to the article in the discord and in the video description other than that you lot take care i will see you lot in the next video peace